Welcome to Mikon's hardware. These days I'm feeling not the best, but the test results are already waiting for a few weeks and I cannot postpone this video any longer. Thus I'm recording as is and if I have some weird voice, well I apologize for that. In this video I'm going to compare Intel Mutant QNCT for the Intel LJ1151 platform against Intel Xeon 2640 V3 for the LJ1211 version 3 platform. Originally, I really wanted to also add uh, another mutant QL2X into the mix, but unfortunately this mutant just refuses to work with my ASRock B365 Pro 4 motherboard. The QL2X mutant is basically the same as Intel Core i7-6700K, it has 4 cores and threads and ability to overclock. On my MSI Z370 motherboard I was able to achieve at least 4.5 GHz on all 4 cores. Unfortunately this motherboard I don't have anymore and as I said ASRock B365 Pro 4 simply refuses to start up with this mutant. I have tried multiple different bias options, I have also tried to talk to the AliExpress seller, he was trying to help as much as he could, but my motherboard simply refuses to start. So we have what we have and in this video I'm going to compare just two CPUs, QNCT and E5 2640V3. This comparison is particularly interesting because the uh, entire system on QNCT and E5 2640V3 would cost about the same. Both systems have pros and cons and some people are not sure which route to go. Thus, in this video I will try to answer these questions. Let's start with the QNCT mutant itself. This mutant has 6 cores and 12 threads, and the frequency is about 3.3 GHz when loading all cores to 3.6 GHz when only a few cores are loaded. It is interesting to see that HWinfo detects this CPU as Intel Xeon 2400. I have never heard of this CPU, but this is what I get in my HWinfo readings. Another interesting thing is that um, HWinfo claims that the maximum clock multiplier for this CPU is 4 GHz. Even though it is possible to apply this value in the BIOS, the CPU still doesn't go any higher than 3.6 GHz when one or two CPU cores are loaded and more than 3.3 GHz when all CPU cores are loaded. Detailed by settings on my ASRock B365 motherboard with QNCT for the best possible performance, you can see by the link provided here or here, I still don't remember which site YouTube is using it to add the links, but I will try to remember to add it. QNCT used to cost about 55 euros on AliExpress, but due to its popularity the price goes up, availability goes down, and sometimes it might be hard to find this CPU for a reasonable price. There is another alternative called QNVH. It's about the same CPU and it has exactly the same core and frequency configuration. Thus, everything I tell about QNCT is most likely applicable to QNVH, but I have not tested QNVH myself. QNCT, as I mentioned, was tested on ASRock B365 motherboard, and Xeon i 2640 v 3 was tested on Schwamway X99S 2011. Both of the CPUs were tested with 32 gigs of memory, 4 sticks, 8 GB each, just killed DDR4 3200. With the Xeon, the maximum possible memory speed is DDR4 1866, and the memory timings were reduced to CL11. Unfortunately, with the Chinese X99 motherboards, it is not possible to adjust memory voltage, thus, I could not reduce the memory timings even further. On the other hand, with Mutant we are using a branded motherboard, thus I can increase the memory voltage to 135 volts, which was the desired voltage for this memory kit, and the memory speed was DDR4-2533 CL12. My QNCT would also boot up with the DDR4-2666, but with this configuration the system was not completely stable. Sometimes game crashes, sometimes Blender crashes, sometimes Cinebench R23 crashes. Thus I was forced to clock it down to DDR4-2533. The rest of the components are identical for both of the CPUs. AMD RX 6800 XT graphics card, two SSDs, two 40 GB for the system and two TB for games, and all of these components are powered by EVGA Supernova P2 750W power supply. Let's start our comparison with the checking out memory and cache performance using ADA64 memory test. Here we can see that uh, Xeon E5, which has four memory channels, is providing better values when we are reading, writing or copying memory. But QNCT, which has slightly higher memory frequency and better memory timings, providing much better latency. In this particular instance, the difference is up to 12 nanoseconds. 
it is a rather big difference which in no doubt will affect gaming performance with these two CPUs. CPU cache performance level 1, level 2 and level 3 is about the same between both of the CPUs. Somewhere Xeon is faster, somewhere QNCT is faster. Before I go into the gaming test, let's quickly take a look at some synthetic benchmarks. As expected, the Xeon EFI 2640 V3, which has two extra CPU cores, is slightly faster when using multi-core workloads. Still, it is interesting to see that QNCT, which has only six cores, is not that far behind. Of course, QNCT, which has slightly better IPC and slightly higher CPU clock frequency on a single core, is overtaking Xeon E5 when it comes to single core operations. Overall, both of the CPUs are about the same, but strictly speaking, Xeon E5 2640v3 will be a better choice for a workstation. And, of course, this video would not be complete if I would not test some games. Let's start with Far Cry New Dawn. This is a rather old and not optimized game which heavily relies on CPU IPC, memory frequency and memory latency. Here, E5 2640v3 is delivering only 55 and 76 FPS. QNCT is able to improve the results to 61 and 85 FPS. But how about Far Cry 6, a much more modern and much more optimized game, even though still very badly optimized? Here we can see that 6-8 cores is the sweet spot for gaming, and if i 2640v3 with its 8 cores and QNCT with its 6 cores are delivering basically identical performance. 35-79 FPS for Xeon, 36-79 FPS for the Mutant. Assassin's Creed Odyssey is a good example of how not to optimize games. This game delivers horrible performance no matter what CPU you use. Nevertheless, the game can be used to compare performance of the CPUs, and these two are going neck to neck. E5 2640v3 renders 2157 FPS, QNC Team Mutant gives us 23 and 57 FPS. Assassin's Creed Valhalla is a much newer and much more optimized game, but it is also way more demanding to the CPU. Still, both of the CPUs are delivering almost identical performance yet again. E5 2640v3 renders 74 and 121 FPS, while Mutant gives us 72 and 126 FPS. Slightly worse on minimum and slightly better on average. Watch Dogs Legion has a very similar optimization compared to Assassin's Creed Valhalla, but it is also more demanding to the CPU performance compared to Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Here, 8-core Xeon is slightly better. 61 and 85 FPS compared to 58 and 80 FPS delivered by Mutant QNCT. Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege is a fast-paced shooter which heavily relies on CPU IPC, memory speed and memory latency. Yet, Xeon E5 2640v3 manages to beat QNCT. In this game, it delivers 273 and 341 FPS, compared to 215 and 285 FPS from QNCT. I am not sure why the gap is this big, but I can speculate that it is because the Xeon E5 has much more CPU cache compared to QNCT. Immortals Phoenix Rising It is another badly optimized game. Even though it is able to load almost every CPU core, it fails to deliver performance. Xeon E5 2640v3 renders only 16 and 62 FPS, while QNCT is not much better, 18 and 60 FPS. F1 2021 is a fast-paced racing game which doesn't really need many CPU cores but relies on IPC and memory frequency as well as latency. Still, both of the CPUs are delivering almost identical performance. Xeon E5, which has more cache, is able to match QNCT. 183 and 229 FPS for Xeon, 183 and 221 FPS for QNCT Mutant. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is the last tested game, and yet again we see almost identical performance between the two CPUs. Xeon delivers 73 and 116 FPS, QNCT gives us 73 and 110 FPS. So, all in all, if we combine all of these results, we can see that Xeon E5 2640v3 is just a tiny bit faster than QNCT. So the performance is very similar, but how about the power consumption? Testing Assassin's Creed Valhalla, where both of the CPUs are delivering almost identical performance, system equipped with QNCT consumes about 320 watts. Under the same conditions, system equipped with E5 2640v3 consumes about 345 watts. The difference in power consumption is about 25 watts. It's not that big, but it is significant. While performing Blender BMW benchmark, system equipped with QNCT consumes about 127 watts. 
Under the same test, system with EFI 2640V3 consumes about 161 watt. In this case, the difference about 30 watt, but we also need to keep in mind that in Blender, EFI 2640V3 was slightly faster than QNCT. Thus, the power consumption of Xeon is worse, but it is not that much worse. It is also important to mention that I have tested my QNCT with extra 20 mV on the CPU voltage. I have done that because it turns out that I can overclock memory controller of QNCT to 3.7 GHz. But my particular sample was not stable with this overclock unless I increase the CPU voltage. Maybe you will get a better sample which does not require extra voltage, or maybe you will decide to leave the settings on their default value which is about 3.3-3.5 GHz, and then you could try even to undervolt your CPU, and in that configuration QNCT will consume even less power, and then the gap between QNCT and EFI 2640v3 will grow. Overall, as expected, much newer architecture of QNCT and only 6 cores compared to 8 cores of Xeon play their roles, and QNCT is a more power-efficient CPU than Xeon EFI 2640v3. Now, with all of this in mind, which of these two I would pick for myself? Before answering this question, let's go through pros and cons of each CPU, starting with the Xeon EFI 2640v3. What are the pros of this CPU? First, CPU installation is pretty simple. Second, the productivity performance is slightly better. Third, the CPU or entire system based on EFI 2640v3 would be slightly cheaper compared to QNCT equivalent. And fourth, EFI 2640v3 can work with ECC registered memory, which means you can have more memory in your system if you need to, and it also means that you can buy cheaper memory. As you guessed it, EFI 2640v3 also has its cons, and the biggest minus or the biggest problem of this CPU is the Chinese X99 motherboard. These motherboards have questionable quality, and the prices are also very questionable lately. The second minus will be slightly higher CPU power consumption, and the last one will be slightly worse IPC or instructions per clock compared to QNCT equivalent. Switching to QNCT itself, what kind of pros and cons this one has? Starting with the platform, LJ1151 is a much newer platform and the motherboards are branded, so you will not have any issues with the quality of Chinese X99 motherboards. You can find official support, official BIOS, and you can also find motherboards with a Thunderbolt support, as well as lots of different USB ports, better audio, and overall, motherboards are way much better than the Chinese X99 options. The second pro compared to Xeon EFI 2640v3 is slightly better IPC, and the last one will be better power efficiency or smaller power consumption. Not a surprise, but QNCT also comes with its cons, and the biggest one will be the modified BIOS. To make this mutant work on your LJ1151 motherboard, you need to use a modded BIOS, and most likely you would have to use CH341A or some other flash programmer to write this BIOS onto your motherboard. There are only a few gigabyte motherboards which would allow you to flash modded BIOS without an external flash programmer. Some people are scared with these and sometimes the process may not go right, thus it is the biggest con of using a mutant CPU. Also compared to Xeon EFI 2640v3, QNCT has worse productivity performance and the overall price for assembling an entire computer based on QNCT compared to Xeon will be slightly higher with QNCT compared to Xeon EFI 2640v3. With this list of pros and cons, which of the CPUs I would pick for myself if I would need a budget-friendly gaming computer or a workstation? For myself personally, I would go with QNCT, but there is a very big but. If you need lots of memory or you can utilize lots of PCI Express lanes which are provided by the Xeon EFI 2640v3, then Xeon is the obvious winner. You can have much more expansion options compared to QNCT Mutant. Still, for a simple gaming computer or simple desktop computer, I would prefer QNCT, even though it requires customized BIOS to be flushed using external flash programmer. With this, I have to say thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I hope it was interesting, I hope it was educational, bye bye.